Hey, I'm Mike Baccarell, and today we're going to take a look at an arpeggio technique that Jimmy Weibel uses. Let's take a look. So this arpeggio is a D minor 7 arpeggio, and it's based on this shape that we all know, with the root on the 5th string, you know, so 5th fret, 7th fret, 5th fret, 6th fret, and, and then on the middle 4 strings. D, A, C, F. So this pinky, he's sustaining the C, which is the flat 7th. And then underneath that, he's playing this little arpeggio run. So that arpeggio run <clears throat> just goes up and down this chord shape with one added note in there. So what he does is he goes, holds the C, and then plays D with his first finger on the fifth string, and then A here, and on the third string he plays C, and then he bars over to the second string and plays E, which is the ninth, it's not in the arpeggio, and then he, with his second finger, grabs F, which is the arpeggio, and pulls off, back to that E, lets go of the C at this point to play A here, and then goes back to his pinky here, so... So all he's doing is just running up this arpeggio. So as far as chord tones go, he's holding the seventh, root, fifth, seventh, nine, third, nine, fifth, seventh. So let's move that around to some other arpeggios. So let's stay in D and let's see if I can do this to a D7 chord. So all I had to do for this one was just change the F to an F sharp. And everything stays the same. Make the sound of a D7 or a D9 chord. So let's try D major 7. So for this I have to reach up and grab the C sharp here on the C because it's the major 7 now, right? So remember, we go root, fifth, seventh, nine, three, nine, five, seven. In order to do that, I have to hold this here and then bring my pinky up. And for me, that's difficult. It's not impossible, but it's very difficult. And I'm, chances are I'm not going to actually use it because it's so difficult to do. So what I do in this case to make it more playable for me is I move the ninth from here to here the first time I play it. And then I refinger, so instead of using one, three, I go one, two to grab the fifth. And then I bring my first finger up to the third. So I grab the nine here with my third finger, and I grab my the third, the second finger, and I actually pull off back to where the nine was on the second string with my first finger, and then I grab the fifth again. That might be a little convoluted for some, but for me that, that works, and I might actually use that now because I can visualize the arpeggio, and I can actually play it without having to, to worry about you know the stretch. Now, in, in, on, in a higher key, the stretch might not be an issue, but if I'm doing it down here, I'm going to have to refinger it. So we're going to use this shape of the D half diminished chord. You know, the 5-6-5-6. Five, six, five, six. This one provides another fingering problem. So remember, we hold, we hold the 7th and we go root, 5th, 7, and we go to 9. Now the 9 here, because I'm thinking of, you know, Locrian, you know, the, the regular minor 7 flat 5 situation is a flat 9 in this case. So I would have to actually bring my finger back with using the same finger, so I'm going to avoid that, and I'm actually going to change the shape slightly. So rather than jump up to the 9 there, I'm going to jump up to the root, which is on the same string. And then I'm going to grab the 3rd with my 2nd finger, and then pull off to the flat 9, and then grab the flat of 5th here. That covers every basic seventh chord type, you know. Now there's there's obviously a bunch of variations, you know. You might have a flat nine or a you know a major nine or you know whatever's going on based on how you're playing this. So it could change. 
But let's take it as an exercise and run it through a major scale and apply it to all seven chords. So I'm going to pretend this D minor, we started in, this is the two chords. So I'm going to play it in C. So I'm going to start C major, D minor, E minor, F major, D7, A minor, B minor, 7 flat 5, back up to C. So doing this, so remember I had to change the fingering for the major 7. There's that. It's a 2 chord, a 3 chord. Now that has the flat 9 again, so again I'm changing the shape slightly and, and making it fit. Four, five, six, and seven. And we go back to one. As far as right hand fingering goes, I'm playing the top note with my middle. And I guess it really doesn't matter what you play the top note with at first. But then I go thumb, thumb, and from there I just I just alternate. Once I get to the third string. I am, I am. This is a really cool idea, and I'm finding that I'm using it more and more at playing uh, especially when arranging, you know, chord melodies and stuff like that. But even in my comping, I'm finding that if I'm holding a note, you know, it, I'm starting to think about how I can, you know, accent that note and bring the arpeggio underneath it. And so this is a really cool idea to, to mess around with and run with. Um, again, Jimmy Weibel is the gift that keeps giving. So hope you enjoyed that lesson. Keep practicing. I'll see you next time.